Are you a real estate investor that wants to know different ways you can go about funding your deal? Well, guess what? This video is perfect for you. After watching this video, you're gonna learn about multiple ways that you can go about funding your real estate deals that are creative and outside of the norm. And it's all gonna begin right after this. Hi everyone, I'm Josh Savars, investor and realtor with EXP Realty Brokerage. It'd be so nice if you can help us out and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the notification bell to get updates on our newly uploaded content. And if you're looking to invest in real estate with great cash flow and great appreciation, hands off, guess what? Click the link below, book an appointment. We'd love to chat with you further and help you grow your portfolio or help you get into real estate investing. And without further ado, let's begin. As a real estate investor, there's not a one size fits all when it comes to funding your deals. It all depends on your circumstance, your resource, even your team members. So something I wanted to kind of give you a bit of a heads up before we continue about talking about different ways you can fund your next deal. Many of the strategies that we're actually about to go into, we've actually used personally ourselves as worked great for us in our real estate investing journey. Number one, cash. Obviously this is one of the easier methods in today's video, essentially with cash, you have enough funds in your bank account that are sitting around that you can purchase a property in full without needing any type of financing from any other institutions. Remember, if you have your funds sitting in a savings account, you're essentially losing money. A lot of these savings accounts are only gonna be giving you about like 0.25% interest, and with inflation being five to 7%, you're essentially losing more than six to 7% every single month. So why have your money in your savings account when you can go about investing into an asset that's gonna give you cash flow, appreciation, provide you equity, and have the ability to scale to multiple properties? As we've seen, inflation continues to go up even though it is slowing down a little bit, you're still losing money every single month. So even though you don't see a decrease, let's say you have $100 in a savings account, at the end of the month, let's say inflation is 7%, your $100 is actually really worth 93 the next month, but your account is still going to show perhaps $100.25. Now with having enough cash to purchase a rental property, you have the ability to get an asset, like I've said multiple times, that'll give you cash flow, appreciation, equity, have the ability to scale. So by having, let's say $100,000 in USD that you can purchase into one rental property, you can have that essentially scale to multiple properties that are cash flowing, getting appreciation, equity, and helping you scale to more properties than essentially having your funds into a savings account where you're losing every single month. And also, this is not including all the tax benefits with real estate. I'm sure I've mentioned this multiple times, where with real estate investing, all the income that you're receiving, you're able to use tax benefits from all the expenses, such as property tax, utilities, insurance, and everything as such associated, including mortgage interest, that you're able to use to write off. So essentially, you shouldn't be paying any taxes whatsoever. Number two, business credit cards. This is actually one method of Robert Kiyosaki, a very well-known real estate investor, I'm sure many of you already know, is how he actually funded his first deal in Hawaii. Now, business credit cards are not gonna be the most ideal form as it's gonna have a high interest rate attached to it. However, if you're someone who has a lot of business credit cards without access to a lot of funds through it, you can essentially use, compile those funds together to purchase a property and essentially potentially have enough to be paying just the interest alone on those credit cards every single month and the cash flow received from your rental property. Now with the business credit card, it doesn't essentially mean you have to have, let's say five different business credit cards with like $25,000 each. It can essentially be one business credit card with even like 10,000 or 15,000 and use that alongside with any other investing means you have. You can combine it together to help you get there as a form of like a down payment or essentially if you have enough through all the different means, use it towards purchasing a rental property outright. And the great thing about this is many of these types of credit cards tend to have a rewards program attached to it. So not only are you using the funds from a credit card to purchase a property and the cash flow to pay it down, but you also have the ability to receive rewards that you can use towards financing your lifestyle or for really cool things like gas, expenses for groceries, shopping, and anything else similar. Number three, private money. Now with private money, it could essentially be getting a loan from a family member who has their money in a savings account that's really not performing and being able to use those funds that you can essentially pay them an interest that's higher than the bank and have them loan you the funds that you can go about purchasing a property. Now, typically it is gonna be higher than the banks. So let's say it's about seven to 8%, but what you're gonna receive in terms of cash flow and appreciation of the ability to scale over time is gonna be greater than that. And also your family member is more likely to provide you those funds. The reason being is they're 
probably getting less than a percent anyways at the bank, so they have really nothing to lose getting a higher percentage working alongside with you and their family, so there's that no like and trust factor. Now, private money can also be investors who you don't even know who work with mortgage brokers who lend their funds out between the range is about 7 to 15%. Now with these individuals, they tend to have less restrictions and won't need as much than typical lending institutions at the bank where you'll be able to receive a better rate, but it'll be a lot harder to qualify. And with these investors, you essentially don't have to have as much up front and they're more likely to look at the property as is and less about yourself in terms of funding the deal. Where working with a lending institution such as a Scotiabank or an RBC bank, What's essentially going to happen is that these institutions are going to look more at your ability to take care of financing or monthly payments in the event something was to happen to the rental property where with private lending they're going to say how much can this property generate what's the value does everything make sense then guess what they're going to more likely approve it at a higher rate than opposed to a lending institution would and this can all essentially be done through a promissory note of course having legal documents and having the right legal advice put together for let's say funds of fifty thousand dollars through 30 years at a 5% interest rate, something as such, so there's something in writing so you're able to receive the funds and have everything accounted for. And the great thing with this, as you continue to pay down the loan and provide the returns to these investors, they're more likely to want to fund even more money and work continuously with you. So that's the great thing with being a real estate investor, as you continue to receive funds and you'll be able to pay it down. Investors continue to want to invest money into your projects and they're less likely to give you any issues as they've seen that you've been reliable, you continue to have been great with making payments and helping them get a return of their money. They're more likely to come to you and say, hey, you wanted $50,000, guess what? I can give you $100,000 at a better rate because I know with you my money is secure and I'm going to make returns every single month. And that's the best relationship that you want with any type of lender, whether it's an institutional lender or a private lender, anyone in general. The better relationship you continue to grow with these lending bodies, the best it's going to be in terms of growing and scaling and receiving any type of funds in the future. And with these type of funding, you can go about going through a mortgage broker, you can go on LinkedIn, Instagram, there's plenty of different social media ways you can go about finding these individuals or even going through Google and searching and finding private lenders will be able to fund your deal in the event that you know the traditional form is not really best suited for yourself and you need something that is a little less stringent and a little more lenient. Number four is a home equity line of credit. This is one of our most favorite ways to go about real estate investing is using your primary residence as collateral through a home equity line of credit and using that to purchase a property, whether it being for a down payment, buying it out in full cash, whatever it is, using your own home which is usually on its own, just a liability, and using it into an asset duplication machine. Remember, if your home has tons of equity through appreciation and mortgage pay down, you're essentially sitting on it. So if you're not doing anything with it, it's not going away, it's essentially there. It's just, you're not able to tap into it. And essentially, why would you have something continue to sit on it that's not really giving anything in terms of value, right? This gives you the opportunity to extract it, purchase multiple properties and scale your portfolio to get a better lifestyle and even better wealth than you would through any other means. Now, let's say with your primary residence, you use a home equity line of credit, a HELOC, and you use that to buy one or two more properties. Guess what? In a couple of years, when those properties uh, have a high enough equity or through the birth strategy, let's say you have enough right up front, you can use that property's equity to purchase more properties. So it's not like you only need it from your primary residence. Your rental properties will also build equity in which you can extract from those properties to build your portfolio and purchase more and more properties over time. And that's the wonderful thing about real estate investing that other assets don't essentially have is not only the cash flow appreciation tax benefits, but it's the ability to duplicate from the asset itself. Now with stocks, there could be some form of a stock split where you're getting more shares, but the value is essentially the same. So it's not like these, this one set of stocks through let's say Apple is going to you know, quadruple itself in value in a short period of time and give you multiple other stocks. Not necessarily, it can increase in value over time, but it's not gonna give you the ability to purchase other assets and have more money up front. If you have 10,000 invested into the stock market and it goes up 10% a year, it's gonna go up, you have that much available through the time. However, you're not able to actually pull out any equity of any sorts through the stock market. And the funny thing is, if you go to your lender and ask for a loan on any ETFs, stocks, any of their own, you know, equities types of products, guess what? They're not gonna give you that loan. But if you qualify through your own properties, they will provide you funding on that. Think about that. 
And now, like I said, as you're purchasing more and more rental properties, your cash flow is increasing, which means you have more income coming in. So let's say you've got about five properties cash flowing at 500 a month. Guess what? You've now got about 2,500 in extra income that you didn't have before having those properties, which is fantastic and definitely a good situation to be in. Now, I know lending for HELOCs have been a little more challenging in terms of the ability to extract, but I highly recommend you speak to a licensed mortgage broker who has access to many different lenders and different products and services that they can help you out and provide you with the best option. And you wanna work, like I've said multiple times, with a real estate investment team members, such as a mortgage broker who has experience with investments or lending for real estate investors. Number five on this list is your TFSA tax-free savings account. Now at TFSA, a tax-free savings account is essentially having your funds work for you through stock investing, mutual funds, ETFs, bonds, anything of that sort. And you're essentially, as you're pulling out the funds, you're not going to be paying any capital gains on the interest. You can essentially extract those funds and use them to purchase a property, whether in full or in a down payment. This is a really unique tool because not only were you gaining interest by having it in a tax-free savings account, you have the ability to extract it, not have to pay any taxes on it, and the ability to use that to purchase an asset that will continue to grow over time and help you build your wealth through cash flow, appreciation, mortgage pay down, asset appreciation, force appreciation, and tax benefits as well. Something that you're not gonna find from a TFSA that's gonna be investing on its own through stocks, ETFs, and so on. Number six for those of you in the United States is a self-directed IRA. A self-directed IRA is essentially the same thing as a TFSA here in Canada. You're able to invest your funds into some sort of stocks, bonds, equities of that sort, be able to have the appreciation, not have to pay any taxes on it, have the ability to extract it and the ability to purchase properties with it. And the great thing is your IRA over time as you're using those funds to purchase the property, essentially is owning that real estate property which is receiving income from tenants every single month. Now the best way to go about this is to invest in real estate and to not touch it, let it be, so then over time as you retire, you won't have to pay any taxes, which in the US is about 60 years of age, and in Canada, it's 67 years of age. Number seven is another one for US investors. It's the 1031 exchange. So let's say you've got a property that you've inherited that's not performing very, very well. You have the ability to roll this property over into an investment property that actually provides a better return for you and your money. Now, this is more of an advanced strategy, and there's a lot more content out there on this, so feel free to research a little bit further but it's great for those in the US who have the ability to use its benefits to help grow their portfolio from something that's already not performing very well for them. Number eight, hard money. Now hard money is essentially very much like private investors who are not financial institutions that'll be able to provide you lending in the event that you can based on down payment, credit score, income, and so on and so forth. So hard money lending is very much like private lending where you essentially don't need to have this, the greatest credit score, down payment, or income to purchase a property. However, it's going to have higher fees and usually it's going to have a time frame in which the funds need to be paid back. So this is a great strategy for people who are going about flipping because they can go about receiving the funds, have to pay a higher interest, but know that in a couple of months, they'll be able to pay it off in full and be able to profit from the remaining amounts of the profits from the flip that they had taken place. Now, if you're an investor who's going to use this strategy to go about rolling over to purchase multiple properties like a HELOC, it's probably not the greatest strategy given that many of them do have a timeline in place that needs to be fulfilled or there's going to be some legal issues there. Um, but this is fantastic for those of you who are going to go about real estate investing through flipping properties, where like I had said already, you have the ability to purchase the property, flip it, be able to pay back all the money and all the interest and be able to make a cut, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50,000, whatever it is on that spread of that deal. Now remember, hard money is not for everybody. So I highly recommend you speak to a mortgage specialist who works with all different products and services, especially works with real estate investors that can get you the best information and get you the right lending product for your rental portfolio. Number nine, another favorite of ours, and it's joint venture real estate investing. Joint venture real estate investing is essentially having two different sides. You have a working partner who has the experience, the knowledge, the expertise, has the team, and does everything from finding the properties all the way to closing and finding tenants. And then you essentially have the financing side or the money partner who essentially is going to provide the funds for down payment, 
qualify for financing or purchase the property outright and provide any funds for any type of maintenance that was to take place in the future. Now, many times individuals might say, well, why would I want to join venture when I can do it myself? And that's very much true. However, there comes a point where investors will be capped out with what they can receive from lending and that they decide to partner with other individuals who have funds but have no idea what they're doing with real estate investing with individuals who might be tapped out but have all the expertise and know they can get a return for that investor while also getting cash flow and appreciation on their selves too as the working partner. Now with these type of deals, essentially how it works is that they tend to be 50-50 or 60-40 where both parties get half if not 60-40 depending on what's negotiated in terms of cash flow appreciation and there's usually very clear guidelines in the joint venture agreement that identifies everyone's roles and responsibilities. Now the best structures usually for these is to have a money partner just provide the funds and not have any involvement and have the working partner provide all the expertise and hands-on experience and have no financial objections coming in because then things can become a little more muddy as there's more involvement from one party over the other the other party might not be very pleased the fact that one party may have provided funds and is working on the deal where the other party maybe not so much but at the end of the day whatever it takes to getting a real estate investment deal that works out for all parties that helps grow the expectations and the goals of both parties essentially is a win-win for everybody. And joint venture is a fantastic way for any investor, as I already mentioned, for those of you who've got two or three properties who are capped out from most lending institutions, that you can go about partnering with other friends, family, and even investors you've never met before and be able to grow a massive portfolio. And as you continue to succeed, you're gonna have other investors want to work with you because those investors are gonna tell their friends and family and then they're gonna want a piece of the pie. And those existing investors that you've invested with and have given them a great return, they're gonna to wanna to continue to work with you on an ongoing basis. And with these, I highly recommend that you have them in some sort of a corp. You don't want them to be privately held. And we've said that in these videos in the past because it limits the liability. Now, let's say everything was held personal, then essentially what will happen is if the tenant was to trip and fall on the property, what can take place, the tenant can actually sue the investors involved and they could potentially lose everything they have. We're having in the right corporate structure means that anything was to take place, they can only be sued as to what's in that corporation or only that property, depending on the corporate structure that you have your properties in. That's why it's super important that you work alongside a cross-border specialist or a real estate lawyer and a real estate accountant that can provide you the best structure needed to get you the most security and the best tax rate there is available. Number 10, this is probably one of the more common ones in terms of getting people in start in real estate investing for some individuals, and that's inheritance. Now for some investors who get into investing this way, they may have a family member who passes away who provides their home, their car, gold, any type of asset that's worth any money, they're able to use those funds or sell the property or extract or anything of that type of sort to purchase a rental property based on the inheritance that they had received. This is one way that I know many investors have got into real estate investing who maybe didn't want to go about the HELOC method or home equity line of credit method. They actually received funds from a family member passing away, inherited a house, decided to either refinance that house to purchase rental properties or sold it in general, used the preceding cash to go about purchasing rental properties and then got into it that way and continue to rinse and replete and duplicate. Now, not everyone is in this position to use inheritance, but it's always something that can be used to fund your deals. And if it does happen to come your way, it's an idea that you've now have that you could use to help grow and scale your portfolio. I hope this video is super helpful and insightful and gives you all the information that you need to know about different ways that you can go about funding your next deal. I'm Josh Tavares, investor and realtor at the XP Realty. Don't forget to help out and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the notification bell to get updates on our newly uploaded content. And like we've said before, if you're looking to get passive real estate investments that have great cash flow, great appreciation at a low price point, let's book an appointment down below in the description. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Take care and have a great day.